It's Friday, September 6, 2024. It's a few minutes before 8 a.m. Eastern. So while we have levels on the board like usual, I just want to point out that there's something developing on the hourly chart that could play out to the downside in kind of a big way. I've been saying for quite a while that if we see hourly closes below 554, which is the low or the bottom part of that range they've been hanging out in for a while, that the spiders probably are going lower somewhere. And so if they find some resistance, hopefully it's at one of these levels. If I were trading today, which I won't be, got too much going on and probably won't look at my computer until early afternoon or so. But if I were trading, I would want to be on the short side today. That's all I'm pretty much saying. But we'll, we'll talk about any trades that were taken at these levels in the E-mini futures after the market closes. It's Saturday afternoon now, wrapping up this recap video. So they did, in fact, fall. Kind of predicted that this morning, didn't we? Uh, sorry, Friday morning. So stick around. I'll show you the chart pattern on the hourly chart that I talked about that basically told us yesterday morning that the odds were good that price would fall in a big way if that consolidation pattern played out the way it usually does. And so that's what happened. So yes, definitely a good day to be short. I wish I had been available to trade on Friday. I feel that I could have definitely pulled some points out of the market, especially around 1030 a.m. after the first hour closed. But we'll talk about that in a minute. But I was tied up most of the day, so no trades for me. So let's say that you had these levels from the morning before the market opened and all you knew were the rules of the strategy to trade when price in the SPY gets to a level. What would you have done? First, when they came up into 550.90, immediately after the opening bell here, you would have typically ignored that level and let the market kind of settle in for about 15 minutes. And if they were to come back up again and hit this level, 550.90 or so, you would have taken it for a trade. Usually that approach works better than entering trades uh, before that 15 minute mark. In this case, there was good overhead uh, resistance here and a short trade would have worked great. Since hindsight is 2020, you can see now that that was basically the high of the day and being short would have been kind of the ticket. Or you could maybe bought some uh, you know put options on the SPY with a strike price around 550, 551 or so and given the trade some kind of play out over a few hours. Anyway, I'll show you the clues on the hourly chart that would have helped you trade at this level. But strictly playing by the rules, you would have waited 15 minutes and then traded the level if price came back up into it after that time. But that did not happen. When they attempted it a second time, they came up short, pulled away before triggering a short trade. So that was 948. And so no trade at this level, playing by the rules. But down here at 548.34, your operating level to trigger the long trade in the E-minis would have been 548.39, add five cents to this, and they came up just within a certain threshold um, here and pulled away, and that's essentially the trade. They came up short, bounced, and that's usually, that's what I call a near miss. It's like they gave the trade there without giving the trade. So, so knowing this ahead of time, and I'd like to see more time go by before they come into another level to, before attempting it again, but that didn't happen. So... Plus, knowing that you know you would have really wanted to be on the short side today, so it's usually not a good idea to trust the level again for a long trade in a day like that, and like Friday, especially if price had already been down there before. So in this case, the level did provide some support. That's more than enough for a base hit and bounce, but we're only playing by the rules. It would have been your choice to take this, but treating it like a process, no official trade here. So nothing here, nothing there. Now we're down to 545.60. So, would, so the question is, would you have jumped in and bought down here for a long trade? I would not have trusted this level for a trade, and I'll show you later on the hourly chart why not. Since the rules that I have for entering trades at these levels are based on market behavior as price approaches a level, like if X happens, then do Y, then looking at this level by itself and how price is approaching the level is is fine. You would You would have taken the trade. There's a chance that there could have been sufficient support at this level for at least a base hit. But when you're analyzing other things in real time on other charts, it kind of brings some subjectivity to this aspect of trading. And knowing these things is kind of a help or a big help in determining how likely a level will provide the right kind of reaction. So in this case, I would not have trusted the level, but we're going to treat it like a process, a systematic process, and say you did buy E-mini contracts right here, 545.65. What would have happened? You would have reversed after a signal was given, and you would have given 14 and a half points back to the market on a fumble and gained at least a base hit as they kept falling. It was quite a big move here. And the price is coming into 542. Same thing. We're just going to treat it like a process. And you would have bought again at this level. They found support eventually. And yes, you would have been out of the money, but 
there was no signal given to reverse this, and they bounced up and gave you the base hit. Now, I'm not saying you could have held this, but if you had bought here and bought here and waited, your average interest price would have given you base hit, and you would have had no fumble, but that's that's not really, really realistic. So no more levels were hit after this, at least nothing that I had on the board. There is a pretty good explanation for why they found support down here. You can look at that also on the longer time frame charts. So uh, just to reiterate, and we'll look at this on the on the tracking log, the only trade really was, or two trades, long here, but a fumble, a reversal, a base on the reversal, and then another trade here would give you a base hit. So that would have ended you in the red a little bit. But let's take a look at some other time frames. We can talk through some of this of like why I thought they were going to go down today. Here is the daily chart with that range defined between 564 and 554. So I've been talking about this range for nearly two weeks now. On the hourly chart, we can look at that. It's probably a little bit more defined. So you can see that they could not get above 564, could not get below 554. And that's the former all-time high. So they would have had to close some hourly candles above 564 to approach the all-time highs, which is like a dollar away or so. And that would have been what the bulls wanted for this bullish consolidation to play out. Because what you see here is this bullish trend. They're consolidating for a period of time. And if they were to close some hourly candles above this, had every reason to do this, then they could have busted out. But what I said was if they start closing hourly candles below the low of this range, which is 544, that's kind of the neighborhood, then that energy, essentially, they're going to run into some trouble. Like the bulls would run into trouble if that kind of market behavior would play out and typically mean that that whole breakout is off the table. And not only that, hourly closes below the low of this range would mean that the bears would probably be back in control for a while. So just look what happened. The last couple hours here on the third, that was Tuesday, they closed below that line in the sand. And then all day on Wednesday and Thursday, kept closing hourly candles below 554. And then on Thursday, there was this big drop right here. Is this Thursday? Yeah, September 5th. This big drop on the second hour of the day. It's the 1130 candle. And then there was like, they started climbing back up, kind of stair-stepping their way back up this big breakdown candle, hovering above this 200 period moving average. And so this is kind of one of the clues. When price starts to consolidate within a big breakdown candle like this, they start stair-stepping their way back up toward the top of the candle. This is a bearish consolidation. It will usually play out to the downside. As price is getting closer to the high of that breakdown candle, you're looking for reasons for some type of resistance. That is your resistance there. But the way this would play out is price would go down below the low of this and, and fall down. So I'm seeing this happen uh, Friday morning. The timing's right, and the, the pattern is right for a fall down. Like a bearish consolidation is going gonna, is gonna to fall Notice how many hours it took them to get where they were by this opening bell on Friday. The first hourly candle on Friday was the seventh candle. That's right here. Seventh hour of this consolidation. That's a pretty important number in terms of consolidation patterns. So it's not too surprising that after that seven hours of time in this bearish consolidation, essentially going sideways, they hit some overhead resistance, which happened to be coincided with this 20 period moving average. And then they started to look weak. And we had a level up here at 550.90 or so, wasn't it? And... So we had several reasons here to be on the short side. It was becoming increasingly more appealing around 10 or 10.30 a.m. or so in the morning. So see what happened. They started to fall. They sliced right through this 200 period moving average. That's the black moving the line here. And it's normal for price to maybe not respect smaller moving averages like, say, the 20 period, especially if price has been hanging around it for a while. But there will usually be some kind of reaction at these convergences of the 200 period moving average. It was around, what, SPY 547 or so? So and we had 545.60 on the board. So would you? That's that's why I was asking earlier. Would you have trusted that level? That's one of the reasons I wouldn't have, especially after the 10:30 a.m. close. But they're coming down through this level already. So these reasons I just showed you, and a few other on other charts, would were the reasons I wouldn't have trusted that level. And if you hadn't taken it, just ignored it, which is there's no harm in doing that. Then it would have saved you that 14 and a half point fumble. Um, and really, there's a good chance if I were at the market today, my thought would have been like this. I got an hourly close, 1030 here. So there's the hourly close, the first hour. Seeing this consolidation happening, just resistance, uh, overhead resistance that they they hit or falling down. Now they got below this 200 period moving average. I don't know. I probably would have felt comfortable to just to sell at the market after that close with the expectation they were going to go farther down. And they did. Would I have done that? I'm not really sure. I didn't take any trades, but this was not a day to be long for sure. So check this out also. Found some support. I'll just put a line here. 
So we can probably find some reasons. Let's call it somewhere in this neighborhood, 539. Well, the low was what, 539.44. So they kind of stalled out or found some support, couldn't get lower than that. So just looking at this hourly chart, it might give us some clues why price found support here. But if we're looking at other places, you may have noticed something else. On the weekly chart, you can see that price was pushed down right to its 20 period moving average almost exactly. So look what happened the last time the SPY got down to the 20 period moving average back here. This is the week ending August 8th. Well, the following Monday, they gapped way below and climbed their way back up, got back above the 20 period moving average. So, you know, could they do something like this again, or at least get below the 20 period moving average? And of course they can. Don't forget that the SPY had about three weeks to get above the former all-time high, get above that range and keep going higher, and they didn't do it. That's what the bulls wanted to do, but currently they're kind of in a failure and below that range. So they're kind of, they've been teetering and now they're, they're currently falling. So how low are they going to go? Well, that's the question. What about the monthly chart? So look how far extended they are from the 20 period moving average on the monthly chart. If things started to look more like, say, recession-like, like some of the talking heads are saying, how far down could they come? Well, over the next few months, this 20 period moving average is probably going to coincide with this kind of a breakout area where they found some resistance and fell away for pretty much all of 2022, I guess that was. Yep. So there is a convergence there. Does it seem like a long way down? That's what is it, 475 or so? Maybe it seems like a long way down, but let's just zoom out. Let's maybe give this thing, put this trend line here. This is back in the mid-1990s or so to current time, 30 years or so. So if we're considering like reversion to the mean, where you could say, you know, like where would price go if we did have some type of recession? There's no way I'm going to pinpoint an exact price or even make the assumption of a huge loss of value is even in the cards. But look how far down they'd have to come to even look remotely bearish on this monthly chart. I mean, this is the 50 period moving average here. So below 475, maybe 400. I mean, like, here's the kind of, I'll just, you know, I'll just eyeball this. There's nothing, there's nothing mathematical behind this. I'm just saying, like, this is back when the SPY was like $50 or something. And it seems like it could be reasonable that a recession, there could be some big reset. I'm just, this is the way I like to look at things. It seems hard to picture now, but I have to ask myself, why is price in the SPY been allowed to get this high, this fast on relatively low volume over the last few years? So these are just things that I find interesting. I thought I'd share with you, not predicting anything long-term. And besides, even if price did fall down to like, say, 475 or lower over the next few months, who would remember that I said anything about it today? So it's not really a big deal for the kind of trading that I do with E-mini futures. It's just how I like to look at the market. For now, the SPY would need to get back above the range and start closing candles, hourly candles at least, above that high of the range, start testing the former all-time highs, and they could bust out. Otherwise, they're kind of flirting with lower prices and increased volatility. Look at the beginning of 2022. So they've been climbing. They came up short of hitting 500. They pulled back most of the year. And there's a lot of back and forth during this time. So can you see something similar happening up here? Maybe. I guess we'll know when we know. Over on the log, here is what you could have expected to get if you were playing by the rules, pulling eight points from the market, but giving back 14 and a half. That's the purely objective approach, assuming you would have traded each level according to the rules and not taking into consideration bigger picture things like we looked at. And if you had, you would have been comfortable just being short for at least part of the day as these clues were starting to show up on your other analysis charts. And then my trade, really nothing to see here because I didn't take any trades, but you can at least take a look at the averages and the totals. So I kind of got into the weeds a little bit in this recap video, but hopefully you were able to learn something. You're welcome to take anything you found useful and take it or reject anything you didn't find useful. I just like sharing my approach to trading the E-minis and showing you how I look at the market. And some of what I shared with you, specifically the clues, a couple of clues about that on that hourly chart that I mentioned before the opening bell and kind of showed you the details and shared it with you now. That's kind of a preview of the kind of things that I'm teaching in this trading course, which is still under development. That's really just scratching the surface, though. I know I've been talking about this trading course for a long time. And for any of you who are interested in it, just know that it's still being worked on. I just step back a lot and only work on it periodically. I want it to be complete too, but at the same time, I feel that in providing these levels each morning for free, it's giving traders a chance to get a feel for how they work. And in time, I hope it becomes apparent that they work the majority of the time to pull points and dollars from the market. And since this is a long-term strategy, I think that providing these levels for many months will help reinforce their validity over the long term. In fact, if we go back to March 4, which is when I started providing these levels, so this is everything after March 3, 
this is when I started providing the levels to my you know, pre-subscribers, if you will. This is what you could have expected, trading one, two, or more ES contracts with the levels, just strictly playing by the rules, only pulling four ES points out at each level. So uh, like this Friday would have been a great opportunity to pull more points on the short side, but if you just had the levels and you had no real knowledge of anything else to look for, you would just end of the day in the red, but is this really a big deal? Like I just want to point out that over time, just since March, these are the levels that are provided every single day, and we've, we've talked through every single one of these. I've shown you most of the trades whenever I had a chance to record them, that it adds up. So it's not too bad. I mean, this is what I've been giving away. So over time, these base hits add up. But thanks for watching this recap. Hope you learned something. If you did, show your support by clicking that subscribe button. I'd really like this channel to grow some more before I launch the training material and subscription course. And I'd rather have that happen organically. So I'm depending on you. So thanks for your support. Have a great weekend. We'll be back at it on Monday with new levels and fresh analysis. Thanks again.